1 Corinthians 4, starting at verse 2. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment, yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Tupac, <laughs> this rapper, he made a bit of a lyric, which is only God can judge me. And there is somewhat of a truth in that. Yes, other people within the church can judge you because you um, are under the counsel of the word of God. You should be following this. You should be in line with the word of God. And when we see somebody that's out of step, we can uh, draw alongside them in love and try to guide them back into alignment with God's will and God's word. But it's a small thing that man should judge us because at the end of the day, God knows everything about us and he knows our heart. If there's conflict within the church and people think you're doing wrong but you see folly in their judgment, then you shouldn't get all upset about it or all annoyed. You should continue walking on in Christ, knowing that God sees and knows all of everything that's going on. You don't need to be elevated or justified by man because God will elevate you and justify you in the end for the righteousness that you've had here on the earth. If you see that there are elders that are outside the step of the word of God, then you know you could approach them, you could speak to them, but really you should uh, be on guard because man, you know, we're sinful, we do things that are wrong and um, hopefully everything is in unity within the church and you have a good church but if you find that the eldership are ruling over you and aren't in line with God's word and are putting unnecessary burdens on you and they're not willing to repent or change direction and they themselves fall in line with the word of God then you may need to move to another church and they may criticize you and judge you but the thing is is that if you are a child of God, God's Spirit will condemn you when you do things wrong. You see, initially we do need teachers within the church and we do need to go to church and there's nothing wrong with going to church and, you know, if you love church, you love being with the saints, you love praising together, you know, continue on. But the truth is, is that God is your one teacher, you know, he's your one master. He is your, your great leader, you know, he leads us all. And uh, really what we should be doing is being led by God and not being led by man. Man has his place, you know, spiritual babes need to be, br to be fed milk and then fed meat and move on in the things of Christ. But there comes a point really where the Holy Spirit will lead them. They may have connections within the church and they might be doing great stuff in the church, but they're still being led by God. That's at least where they should end up as. So, um, you know, it's not a problem. Paul is saying, look, it's a small thing for me to judge you, because I, for you to judge me, because I know that God is going to judge. And he knows everything about what is going on. He says he doesn't even judge himself, you know, because he knows that his own judgment is nothing like God's judgment. So he is more interested in what God thinks well, rather than what he thinks of himself which is a good place to be. We should be thinking more about that. We should be thinking, what does God think about me? Rather than, if I think that I'm righteous, how do I line up with God's word? Verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who doth will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Every man have praise of God. Wouldn't that be, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. When God praises me for the righteousness of what I've done, it's incredible. Like, what an honor. You, you, I can't even imagine God doing that. And yet it says here in the word of God that he will do. He will give praise to men for, um, you know, their strength in Christ and what they've done for Christ and what they've built on top of Christ. So amazing thing to look forward to. Halfway through verse 6. Learn in us not to think of men above which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? 
So we shouldn't glory in ourselves because the truth is God gives everything to us. He gives us revelation. You know, this word this word of God, if you're an atheist and you haven't got the Spirit of God and you're trying to read this, you're not going to find revelation. You might look at Bible studies and it might give you a bit of revelation inside there, but it becomes more knowledge than revelation. God gives you revelation when you read the Word of God and as you press into Him. And this revelation is so important. It's so important because without it, you're really reading a dry word. But the thing is, is that all revelation comes from God. So if you're a great teacher, if people are elevating you up, you can't be puffed up. At least you shouldn't be puffed up because God gave you everything. And actually, that's something to look out for, isn't it? Because if we see that somebody is being puffed up and they're being elevated and they're receiving the praise and glory of men for what they've done, know that really we're all on an equal playing field yes there are those in the church that are called to be elders and you know pastoral kind of uh, responsibilities for the church but in general you know we're all on the same level we're all children of god some of us are weak and we're trying to bring each other up but eventually god is leading us and moving us on to the things that he has got for us the church really is a hospital for broken people but broken people become fixed by God himself and then they're useful for service whether that's service in the church that they're in or service elsewhere you know who knows God knows uh, but the truth is is that we should let people be led by God and understand that regardless of how amazing they are we still should be all on an equal playing field and we should just all be loving each other this them themselves you know we just treat everybody as equally as possible verse 9 for i think that god have set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men so like if we think about the different you know things that we've got whether it's prophecy whether it's teachers you know apostles we would say our oh, apostles are up here but paul is saying no apostles are down here we're made you know the least of all they go into places and they church plants they plant churches and they proclaim the gospel and they're hated by many people remember paul went to the jewish people first and many times he was persecuted so he was uh, the least of the least and yet he planted churches and eventually you know people probably saw him as at the top etc but he nevertheless lived a life as though he was lowly in order to save a few verse 10 we are fools for christ's sake but ye are wise in christ we are weak but ye are strong ye are honorable but we are despised even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted which is like to be hit and have no certain dwelling place they're help they're almost homeless the apostles verse 12 and labor working with our own hands being reviled we bless and being persecuted we suffer it being defamed we entreat we are made as filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day so the apostles are despised you know they become the filth of the world as i've said you know they they're just the lowest of low and um you know it's hard work to be an evangelist a church planter um the apostles you know going forth and proclaiming the gospel to people that don't know it uh, because it can end up being hated and persecuted uh, when you think about it the places when paul went they already had a theological system in place and many people were um, dependent on that and yet Paul went in with these new ideas and it would rile up the uh, the crowd they'd almost be riots you know and it's the same situation that we have uh, nowadays you may be in a country where you have certain religions uh, and certain theologies certain ideas that are out there in the community and when you go to try and plant the gospel and to sow seeds you may find a conflict in doing that you become the lowest of the low and yet remember that these people are considered really when you think about it they're considered to be kind of important apostles are important evangelists important everybody important but the thing is is that some roles within the church are despised more than others 
but I believe that uh, those people will receive a reward in heaven. 15. For thou have for though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. So in Corinthians, you know, they probably had quite a few people that were growing up and teaching um, the church that Paul originally planted before he went on to another church. And eventually these people got used to these teachers. It might be that some Jewish people came in, some people from even like uh, from Antioch, you know, people that were well educated in the gospel may have come over to Corinth. I don't know, but what Paul is saying, look, you have lots of teachers in Christ and they probably think that they're quite elevated. Paul saying no they're not elevated they're the same level and although you have many teachers remember they are given the revelation it all comes from God don't don't have them puffed up but remember me remember me because I have uh, begotten you I'm like your father because I brought the gospel to you and you believed and it's true and listen to what I'm about to say now if you have had someone that's brought you to Christ give special consideration to that person because they would have uh, spent time with you they it probably may have been uncomfortable etc but you can be so focused on teachers and uh, you know pastors preachers uh, elders etc that you can forget the person who begotted you the person who brought you to the gospel in the first place someone who proclaims the gospel actually there's probably quite a bit of fruit there and um, you know there's there's um, there's something to be received from them I'm sure obviously everything comes from God God gave his life for you he brought you up but the person that brought you to Christ you know try to learn from them get something from them respect them because at the end of the day they you know they brought the Word of God to you you know they gave you an opportunity to receive life so be you know respectful to them and um, you know and considerate to them and try to follow them in as much as they follow Christ I would say so verse 19 but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power the kingdom of God is not in word but is in power and uh, Paul is talking there about the spiritual gifts isn't he you know he's coming there and he's saying I'm not just giving you word I'm not just being puffed up I'm not just somebody that's coming with eloquent speech I'm giving you the word of God I'm giving you the meat of God that you need but I'm coming demonstrating power using spiritual gifts and the spiritual gifts are for today you know and um, I have seen the spiritual gifts in operation and I myself desire like we all should desire the higher spiritual gifts so I would say you know that if you feel that you're a person of word but you want to be a person of power like I do you know I want more spiritual gifts I want to see them uh, used in me more and more and I'm willing to hand up, hold up my hand and say you know I haven't got every spiritual gift I haven't got necessarily the spiritual gifts that I would like. I want more, and I think it's okay to want more. But if that's you, then uh, my friend, I'm going to go away now and pray about it, you know, and uh, I'll be praying for you as well to receive spiritual gifts. Please also pray for me. If it's your heart's desire to receive spiritual gifts so that you can go forward and proclaim the gospel in power, then please pray for me, and I will pray for you right now. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.